What's going on guys? So today I'm actually going to be taking apart a W541 model. This is a ThinkPad and is a nice quad core. They don't always have a quad core of this model, but this one just happens to be a pretty powerful quad core. Also has a dedicated GPU and video. Uh, and what I need to do is I also need to repaste this one. And because of the design, it requires full disassembly. Uh, so it's not the most convenient model, but I wanted to just share, you know, some of the process of taking it apart so it may help somebody. Uh, the keyboard is especially annoying on this model because there are little screws that go underneath parts of the keys. So it is very common for people to actually break off keys in this process, and I'll show you where that will happen uh, and just give my best advice on disassembling this model. So the first step you're going to want to do is there's actually a thin layer of plastic that makes up the top. In order to get to those tiny screws, I have to first shift forward the top plastic layer under these keys. And to do that, I need to ensure it also goes under this part of the palm rest. Because if it jams up against it, it's actually going to damage, cause some damage to that plastic layer on the keyboard. And as well as this, you don't want to push too hard because if you push it too far forward, you're likely to break some of the delicate pieces that make up the keys on this keyboard. And this is an original backlit keyboard on a mint condition machine so I want to be especially careful so I'm going to take you with me on the disassembly process today uh, I like to get a fingernail there's these little notches here as well which you could opt to uh, use those to push it forward but this time I'm going to use a fingernail and just use what I uh, what I know best to kind of prevent any kind of scratching so what I'm doing if you note I'm carefully just pushing it forward. Now what I need next is a very tiny, very thin screwdriver. to do once I get all these sometimes you got to check them again and once I get them all up I'm going to lift this front side up and I will then pull it forward and lift it up and being very cautious with the ribbon cables all the same making sure I didn't miss any of these hidden screws that are under here which is a really odd place to put it because there's also underside screws so it doesn't really um, make great sense for anyone who's trying to work on their own laptop now it does make perfect sense if you want people to send it back to uh, a Lenovo contractor to handle that kind of uh, what do they call those designs that are meant to make things too difficult for some people now, I think I've gotten these screws up enough, but you really do have to make sure of it. Here's a go. All right. So, at this point, the best course of action, in my opinion, is to sort of bring it forward, being careful, I'm not going to scratch anything. And at this point, I can fold it over and expose our ribbon cables right here and what I'll do next is I'll just sort of flip up this little tab here okay flipping up flipping up pulling the ribbon cable out don't need tools for everything now I'm gonna check the keys out a bit so what I'm doing is I'm sort of pulling back on that plastic layer pulling back there we are and then I'll press on the keys and see what that noise was. Make sure I didn't snap anything. Okay, looks like I might have saved another keyboard from being broken. So common. More than any other uh, keyboard, taking this one off is the one to result in more broken keys than probably just about any other keyboard model. So I'll set that to the side for now. Just sit it over to the side. 
And at this point, I'm going to get a better screwdriver than this. I'm going to first ensure I have no battery attached because I'm about to touch the display cable. If you forget to remove your battery or charger before handling that display cable, you have a very good chance of blowing your backlight fuse. That will mean that you will most likely want to or need to replace your motherboard unless you like tracing down fuses and replacing them. Either way, it's not something you want to deal with, so ensure before you do any of the stuff today, that you have already unplugged it, you've already removed the battery, which I have. Now that I am safe to do so, I am removing the display cable and the other cables over here. So lift up on that, lift up on that. Once they're facing upward, the little clip, then I simply will gently pull out the ribbon cables. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this storage and ram cover just removing all underside screws another big thing you, you got to be careful of if you have you know other screws laying around you don't want to put the wrong size in it can come out through the palm rest so don't make that mistake okay we got those this one also goes into the keyboard so it doesn't really make sense why to have the uh, screws those tiny screws under the keys doesn't make a whole lot of sense on that end, in my opinion. So I've undone that, kind of run my fingernail lightly down here. And part of that is to be gentle, not prying anything. Don't want to take a chance of breaking any of those gentle clips, these little fragile clips here that are easy to snap. Now I'll remove the Wi-Fi card here. And I'll be disconnecting the CMOS battery here. All right, so got all those done. Now there is another set of screws that people may miss, especially if they're trying to disassemble this model. And for that, we're gonna need a X-Acto knife. But mainly wanna avoid cutting into it wherever possible. I'm gonna be really cautious about this one. Okay, just kind of sneaking up under it. And by doing that, you can kind of lift it up. I'm also gonna place this right where the other uh, screws are. All right, to take out the DVD drive, what I'm gonna wanna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and remove a screw right here. Now this screw is right here. And that one is holding the DVD drive in. So I wanna get rid of that one. And then the DVD drive will slip right out. So at this point, I can take a thumbnail even, and the DVD drive is right out. At this point, another thing to take into consideration is these wires are going to hold the bottom on. So you have to feed them through there in order to prevent tearing your antenna wire and also so you don't have trouble removing the bottom. All right, now at, underneath those stickers was another set of screws holding the bottom on. Very easy to crack. All right, so now I should have all my barriers removed to pulling the bottom off. Let's see if it agrees. Oh. There is another screw, just remembering this one. So I will first need to remove this palm rest to get to it. 
And while I'm at it, may as well get these screws. Plenty of screws, as usual. And then I'm gonna kinda go underneath this gently. Uh, try and just loosen the palm rest up a bit since I've got the screws removed. But in order to prevent breaking it, you know, sometimes it helps to just give it a little jiggle. Gently, there it is. And now, what we see is we have another ribbon cable. Just kind of flip that one up once again. Take this speaker wire out, two fingers. And there we have it. Our uh, palm rest is off. And there's yet another screw for the bottom here. It's right over here, actually. Almost missed this before and almost broke the bottom on one. So, I think that's it. But we'll see. Always a good idea to look around and make sure. Aha! There are a couple more. So, there are this here and on the other side, right over here. All right, let's hope this is it now. Aha. Uh -huh. And as so, I am also being careful. There are, as mentioned, there's some wire here. You gotta be careful, that'll tear or that could stop you. Now, bottom's off. So now, to repaste the CPU. I just need to remove the CPU fan and heatsink. Being careful not to scratch this thing up. Now you can take a fingernail, do it that way. Or if you want to use tools. Now. I just need to basically undo this heat sink. Okay, and there we have it. We have the heat sink off. Of course, making sure to detach that fan unit as well. I would need to take out this screw and that screw and that screw, and then also these bolts on the side here. There's actually a bolt over here. So this board also is screwed into that one. So I'm undoing the screws on that. And you won't be able to uh, safely remove the motherboard until they are detached. Now also, CMOS battery over there is attached to the board. And of course, if I'm gonna be removing the motherboard, I definitely want to uh, remove that as well. And then next, of course, going down the line to these smaller screws.
Okay, at this point, I am safe to remove the motherboard. Being careful to feed these wires through the port here. They came through, and there we have it. I've removed it. At this point, we'll want to clean off this, and after that, we'll then just clean the fan out if needed. In my case, I have an actually new model, so I don't need to do any of that cleaning, but even with a new model that I've been holding for years, I still will need to replace that thermal paste because it has been years and over time it will naturally just dry out. So there you have it. And essentially to put it back together I just will reverse the process. Uh, as mentioned the keyboard is one of the trickier parts so be very careful if you end up having to repaste your W540 or W541 the process will be the same but you do have to be especially careful with this keyboard so good luck and let me know what you think in the comments do you want to see more let me know in the comments i look forward to reading them like the video make sure to share it and if you want to support this go to bmc.link politictech and there are several options there including cash app monero bitcoin and there's a monthly membership option if you have an interest in that make sure to check it out there and i will be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy